everybody, Shel Broadnax here with another fantastic episode of Stager Talk. Today, I am so thrilled to have three guests that are going to be speakers at this upcoming RisaCon in July 2019 at the beautiful M Resort in Las Vegas. First, we yeah. have Debbie Boggs with Staging Studio. Hey, everybody. How are they? How is everybody doing? I can't even I'm talk not, now. <laughs> Uh, and then we have Ed Hatch with Ed Hatch Seminars. Ed is an amazing educational instructor, and he teaches people about communication skills and negotiation skills, which are so important. I know all the stagers out there, some of us, you have a hard time closing some sales, communicating your value effectively, and Ed is going to solve all your problems in the entire world with regard to those things at Resacon. No pressure, Ed. Every, every one of them. Every, every one, one of them. Of them. Yeah. And then finally, Last but not least, the amazing David Peterson from Oregon. Thank you. Hi, thank you for having me. So we're going to talk just a little bit about everybody's session. So we'll kind of round robin here a little bit. So let's start out with uh, Debbie. Tell yeah. us, just give everybody a little just snippet. Yeah. I'm sure everybody knows who you are already, but just where you're from, a little bit about Staging Studio, and then what you're going to touch on at Resacom this year. Okay, I'm Debbie Boggs with Staging Studio, and we are one of the very few RISA accredited training providers. We've got, uh, whew, I don't know what that was. Um, we've got a lot of great free resources on our site, as well as courses that get certified, get uh, continuing education. We're based in San Antonio, Texas, where we have our own staging company by design. And at RisaCon, I am so excited about this class because we're going to be talking about all of the hacks for your staging life. So we're going to talk about time savers, money savers, life savers, and face savers. So when I'm talking about face, talking about your your uh, social media face, your website, and all of that. So we've got some hacks for each of those things uh, that are going to be just mind blowing. Awesome. Now, I know there's a lot of people that use technology and a lot of resources to try to stay organized. Let me ask mm -hmm. you this. This happens to me all the time. And maybe you'll be able to touch on this at Resacon. I have all the tools. Uh -huh. I've got the schedulers and I've got it all there. Mm -hmm. However, the problem for me runs into I might be on an email. OK, let me handle this email. The phone rings. You get a text message. A Facebook oh, message, and then you're just on to the next one and the next one and the next one. So literally, when I open up one email, that even one email, if I try to fix something, might result in five other jobs or steps or things that I have to handle. Do you? Will you be able to touch on? I think it's probably a mindset, and um, I don't know if it's mindset issue that I've got going on. Or <laughs> on that at Resacon. Yeah, I'm having trouble hearing you. It, like it keeps breaking out, but I think you're asking about some of the hacks for um, technology, getting them all to work together. Yes, there, we're going to be talking about a lot of those things, about some apps and websites and tools and resources and things that or are going to uh, give you that edge, help you bring all those things together. Oh, I've got a couple of little things. You know, one, uh, one thing is I've noticed, especially um, as I'm looking through stagers photos that uh that they're submitting for Risa uh, for the awards which so excited about that but a lot of the pictures that we see stagers taking they have the walls are all wonky you know so i've got a little hack i want to show you for that one thing is when you're taking those iphone pictures if you're not going to get professional pictures but you've got the got your uh, camera pictures it's natural for us to look down at the, wind, at the room like this. The thing is, then the walls go crazy, distort. So just holding your camera straight up and down level and lining up the grid on your camera with the walls and windows is going to completely clean up your photos. So that's just one little tip. We've got a whole bunch of things that we're going to be talking about, about how to make all of those systems that you've got work together better. Awesome. I can't wait to hear it. So, Ed, let's talk to you for a moment. So I know uh, you and I have uh, exchanged a few emails about really what's going on with real estate stagers. And I know I 
gotten back to you on what I think some of the issues are. And a lot of it is communication, selling your value, and also mindset. Can you share a couple things about what you're going to teach staters at Resicon? Yeah, my session is going to be, I don't want to say the opposite of the technology thing. Uh, maybe the yin of the yin and yang part of it. Uh, this is about face-to-face -face communication with another human being. The, the number one criteria based on Harvard Business School, the, the number one criteria for promotion of any professional in any profession is the ability to communicate effectively, the ability to connect with people, the ability to use a language uh, to be able to influence, persuade, negotiate with and for someone else. Uh, the number one card, the number one obstacle, which we will be dealing with in the session, is trying to give advice to somebody who doesn't trust you. The, the problem with that, of course, is you can give it, you can give it all you want, but they won't take it. Mm -hmm. so, so the question becomes, how do we penetrate the consumers, the clients, a uh, predictable spam filter? How do we get our language through that and actually connect with those people? Uh, until you do that, I mean, if there's a single little seven word slogan to remember, you can't convince anybody of anything unless you can connect with them first. You can you can try to give advice, but they just won't take it. Uh, there are at least three specific, which we will have time to discuss in our session. There are at least three specific touch points between us and another human being that we need to connect with. Language is very much like music as a simile here. It's got form, it's got style, and it's got sequence. If you can identify the sequence, style, and form of communication that your customer or client is using, it makes it possible much more easily and much more quickly to connect with that person. And because you're connected, much more easy to overcome any objections they've got, as in your fee. <laughs> I love that. So are you going to be able to help? You know, sometimes we have those just really negative Nellies. So you've got, you see a stagers out and they're talking um, to somebody who actually, you know, has called them in. They're, they want to look into staging, but then they everything the stager says, they rebut it. They discount it. They don't get it. And it's really, really frustrating. So will you be able to share some tips to stagers to how to get themselves out of frustration? Because I know in the horse world, we have a saying frustration ends or frustration begins when knowledge ends. And I think that holds true in, in every aspect is that when people really start to get frustrated, it's because they don't have a tool in their in their arsenal, the next tool to bring out to combat whatever's facing them. What you're talking about is exactly the symptom we're going to be trying to address. Somebody who's resisting you apparently doesn't trust you enough. That, when you when you try to give advice to someone with whom you've not connected, the common mistake in communication skills, the common mistake in trying to overcome objections is is trying to give advice to somebody who's not receptive. The symptom for that is exactly what you just said. Everything you say will either be misconstrued. So the question is, how in fact you create that receptive environment before you try to convince them of the value of your service and the value of your fee. That makes sense. Establishing that relationship up front Absolutely. is always very helpful. And I, I agree. I think a lot of people just kind of go in straight into the bid or straight into the close. Um, and the, said the close is at the beginning, not at the end. And that's where you really, you know, can develop that relationship. Um, so they're less resistant. We'll be discussing the cognitive mind map, which sounds way more technical than we'll, we'll be discussing it in the 60 minutes we've got at the session. But but there's there's a sequence of touch points to, to move somebody to agreement. You have to understand you have to understand where they are in their map and respond appropriately to, to where to where they are and, and what question they're asking themselves. There are four or five questions they're asking themselves about you. One of the biggest ones in the time we've got here is they won't listen to us unless they believe they've had a sincere, respectful listening. Listening is a, is a key touch point. The, the number one touch point is, am I being treated with respect? The number two touch point is, is the criteria for that, which is, am I getting a sincere, respectful listening? And until and unless I've had that listening, I am not prepared to listen to you. So in the map, 
in that sequence, you have to understand that before you jump into, this is what I do and this is why it's worth so much, you need to ask questions and listen to them so they feel that they've been listened to before they're prepared to listen to us. Got it, I love that. Makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. So David, let's yes. talk about you for a moment, my friend. So you're gonna talk about the stagers checklist, refining your entire home staging process. So I know in, in past years, you've done a lot of, you know, manage the administrative side of your business. So I imagine you're gonna to touch on a little bit of that as well. So can you share with everybody about exactly what your topic is this year? Absolutely. So my name is David Peterson. I'm the co-owner of Synergy Staging. We're uh, just starting our 13th year uh, here up in Portland, Oregon. And um, I have spoken at many of the previous recent cons, um, typically on the business side as opposed to the design side. I think my uh, presentation will go really hand in hand with what Deb is doing because she's talking about hacks and ways to sort of run your business. What we're going to do in our presentation is this is going to be a comprehensive look at how do you run an entire staging project from start to finish? And we're gonna to touch on every single detail and give tips throughout that process. So we're gonna start at the very beginning, which is do you even understand what your company is? What do you wanna provide? What services do you provide? From your initial call, how do you deal with the call, who answers the call, to the property visit, to the proposal, and we'll talk about proposals, to the acceptance of your clients. We'll talk about the staging agreement um, and some of the contract tips. Uh, we'll talk about ensuring that your property is gonna be stage ready. How do you collect money? Um, and then how do you prepare and load for the job? And we'll talk about some tips in uh, warehouse management and packing your truck. Um, tips for installing on staging day and um, uh, and then how do you confirm when your job is done, sending thank you notes, your website postings, all the way to the very end of adding your client to your holiday gift list. So we wanna just make sure that every single step along the way is touched on. There's gonna definitely be takeaways that people will get right away for their business that they can be like, oh, we didn't think about that, or it's a good reminder to do something like that. Yeah, absolutely. So you're giving a complete cradle to grave process. And so I like the word process. So that leads me to systems. So I would imagine yes. you're very, I would imagine both of you as, as stagers are very heavy on systems. Shampoo, rinse, repeat, yes. shampoo, rinse, repeat. Yes. yes, you wanna make everything as simple as possible. So when you're talking about your proposals and your agreements and your emails, you should only be filling in small amounts of information so you can crank these things out quickly, still effectively, mm -hmm. but there's no reason to reinvent the wheel every single time that you're doing a new project. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, we love the systems. It's uh, it's life changing when I know a lot of people will, will do a, just a, an email. It's, it's the same email that you send out to literally everybody, but they don't even make it a canned email, a canned response, something they can just copy and paste or I know you use emails, so you just get a little drop down and click it and the whole canned email can go out. And again, you just change a couple things and you've got a lot of consistency with that. And yes. then I imagine too, with even the sales process, um, there are systems for that as well. Even your mental systems of what it is, how you're addressing somebody again from beginning to end. Yeah, it's all process. I'm a process guy too. Um, my, my background to some degree is in business planning, strategic planning, and there are quotes that I like. Uh, there's an, a guy named M. Edwards Deming, which uh, is he, he was around more in the 50s and 60s, but he's an old guru of business planning. Uh, I, I like to use one of his quotes. One of his quotes is, if you can't describe what you do as a process, you probably don't know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. There are a series of steps. Mm -hmm. They are well thought out. They are choreographed, if you will, and they're implemented in such a way as to create a specific outcome. And that's true whether it's business planning, strategic planning. Uh, I teach this course or course like it to attorneys. I teach this course or one like it to fi at five-star hotels for customer service. And, and clearly we do the same thing with negotiating or communication skills. All of it falls under the heading of you start here and with a series of well thought out sequential steps, get to there. So, so regardless of the profession, regardless of the system, if you will, there's a process to it. There's a beginning and a clear, well thought out ending to it. 
and we'll be covering that in the communication skills as well. Yeah, that that uh, makes me think about one of the systems that we're going to be talking about in our class on hacks and tech tech things and uh, all kinds of ways of being more efficient. One of them is talking about your Sherwin Williams paint deck and explaining the system that is in it. Uh, it's because we get a lot of questions about color from stagers about how uh, it's a little overwhelming how to do that. And so there's a very logical pattern and system of how to use this. And so we're going to get into explaining kind of cracking the code on that. It's like just unbelievable how much easier you can do a console, a color consult uh, when you know how to use that, that tool. You know what else I like about that as well is that when you are bring, bringing something like that tool and then you explain how it works, why it works, yeah. what credibility you lend to somebody who's listening to that. Um, and I'll, I'll give you just, I'll out myself because I always say nothing good can happen to your house if I come and stage it. Because <laughs> I'm not, I, I'm very creative, but I'm creative in different aspects. So mm -hmm. this, you know, I can't go stage a house, but it's just not my passion to be able to right. do it. Of course, the color clearly as defined when I remodeled my kitchen um, many months ago, I chose some great colors. They were actually in my parents' house and they looked all great together. But when I brought it into my house, just with the lighting and it just, it just didn't fly. And I actually got a color consultation and I thought to myself, it's gray. It's gray. It's just gray. <laughs> oh no, there's gray. And there's other kinds of gray. And I'm like, it's green gray. and taupe. Yeah. <laughs> so, so once we got the correct console done and got the correct color up there, I was so impressed. Um, I was so impressed with the person that did it for me. It was like right. she knew exactly all the different tones and the warmths and the lights and how it all kind of worked together. I was absolutely amazed by it. So anytime right. I right. talk to somebody that's got more knowledge than me, um, I certainly wasn't going to question her. And, and I think, um, I guess that goes down to, you know, there's d definitely a healthy respect for the person that I um, consulted with. So when she's mm -hmm. telling me, oh, bless your heart, you already got the wrong gray. You need to look at this gray. No yeah. questions asked. Yeah, I, don't yeah. even, I, don't even, I don't know how much it costs. Just give me the number. I'm going to go get it. Because she she didn't even have to sell me on it. But like Ed was right. saying, I, had, I have trust with her. I didn't mm -hmm. send her. I mean, how I guess I get. I guess that's kind of funny to me too. When you're the professional and you've got clients, and then they second guess you, it's like you're paying for the consultation. We're giving you the best advice that you're out here because this is what we do. And then they still are unsure and they're not sold on it. Yeah, and the thing is, every stager has got to do a lot of color consultations, so they need to have that confidence. So everything we're teaching, we're wanting to give confidence to stagers. I think that's what all three of us here that are going to be presenting at, at RisaCon, everything that we're teaching you is to give you that confidence to walk into those consultations and, and to just really know, you know, come with that background of that you're an expert and that you know what you're talking about and you're going to help them. So that's what all, everything that we're teaching, it, that's where it comes from. Yeah, absolutely. You know, an old cowboy told me a few years back when I started to ride, um, I was, I read every book that I could get my hands on. I watched every video I could get my hands on. I would get up early and start work at 5 a.m. so I could leave work at 3 and go to the barn and, and be out there and just be immersed in it all until the sun went down. And he said, Shell, you can read all the books and you can watch all the videos and all the movies that you want on horses and horsemanship. But until you sit in the seat and you get your hours on your horse, you will never develop the confidence that you need in order to ride well. And uh, it really stuck with me. And it's exactly what it is. The confidence, it's just, again, doing it over and over and over and learning it. And then even believing in yourself, because I know for me, I had a lack of confidence because I was terrified because they pretty much told me when I started that horses can kill you. And so they should probably not have led with that information with me. Um, but you just really have to do it over and over and over to get that type of confidence. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that's what we want for everybody that's watching is to give you tools, give you confidence. And uh, that's why we offer training and courses to do that. Free resources that are on our website that 
give you those tools and uh, and answer those those questions. A lot of times, like you said, you don't even know what the questions are until you get in there and start staging and start going, wait, I don't I don't even know what I'm doing here. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That's for sure. So I love, I love David, what you're going to be doing, walking through that entire process from beginning to end. That's like, there's so many steps in that, you know, people think, oh, hey, I've got a, I've got a great eye. I would be great at staging, but they have no idea all of those little processes and, and steps in between. So I love that you're going to be walking through that. That's yes, great. for sure. I mean, because you can be the world's greatest designer, but if you don't know how to run the business, you can't be a exactly. successful stager. And um, so it's it's very important because most most stagers are, uh, you know, they're the sole owner of their of their company, and they mm -hmm. might have some people helping them. But you have to, you know, really have a, a grasp on all of the different aspects of the staging process, so you can be successful. And that's sort of the whole key here. Like you said, you want to have the confidence. But we also want everyone's business to be successful and to mm -hmm. raise the bar in the entire industry. And um, and so that's where all of this comes in. And like, you know, the communication is so key in talking to your clients yeah. um, and being able to really sell yourself, your product and the business and why it's so important to stage your homes so everyone can make more money and potential buyers can see the, the um, you know, the potential of what their house is going to be. Exactly. Absolutely. So, Ed, let me ask you. I know a, a lot of. Um, I'm going to get a little bit of, into some gender biasness right now. So, every once in a while, and I know it'll be a super shock to everybody, but on occasion, some men can try to mansplain things to women, and um, they're not as receptive when a woman is a woman is kind of delivering the information. Will you be able, since our audience is primarily women? Um, can you, will you be able to give some women some tips on how to deliver the information with the confidence so they don't get things back? And I'll give you an example. I often, um, negotiate with men and recently in the last month, I think I've had two that really tried to bully me and mansplain things to me. And, um, I'm very direct, extremely very direct and to the point. I'm not rude. I'm not shrill, but I know a lot of women sometimes get accused of this when women have a tendency to stand up for themselves just to deliver the information, um, in a positive manner, but without any emotion, just delivering the information as fact, but yet sometimes it's still not receptive. Will you be able to address some of that? Yeah, we'll be spending time on that as well. There's again, there's three key touch points. One of them is, um, again, to use music as the metaphor, mm -hmm. is, is a style of music. I'm sure at this point in time, I learned it as Jungian psychology, that there are four different personality types. Um, more recently, they, they're calling it DISC. I don't know if any of you yeah. have heard the yeah. DISC. Well, it's, it's not a, I don't want to get, it's not really a man woman thing as much as it is there are four different personality types and quite honestly it's not personality as much as communication styles mm -hmm. what we need to do is be able to detect how this person wants information delivered to them and then deliver it in the form that they're comfortable with so it's not just men there are women as well who don't want to hear metaphors stories or parables they don't even want to hear numbers. They just want to get to the bottom line in the next five minutes or so. That That's a man or woman thing. And there are people who are just the opposite. There are people who don't care about the details. They just want to know the, the, the big concept. Just tell me how, how this makes me feel better. And there are some who want to make up their own mind. So you need to present the information in such a way as you sort of, you are guiding them to discover what you could have told them in less time, but, but you come up with a series of questions so they reach their own conclusion. So, so the answer, the, the shorter answer to your question is, yeah, the, we need to be able to interpret, and again, you get this by listening to them, how, how do they wish to be communicated with? So, so in terms of presenting the color wheel, do, do you want to present it as if they don't know? and you're guiding them to a solution? Do, do you want to create a metaphor or parable so they make up their own mind about the question? Do you want to tell them in five minutes or less, this is the best question, this is the best color you should use? Each one of those delivery styles is appropriate, but for a different person. The, the, key, the, the key becomes us hearing that, learning that, and accommodating them. They, they can't adapt themselves to our presentation style 
we have to adapt our presentation style to how they wish to be communicated with. And when you do that, you make that connection or keep the connection that you've made. Yeah, I love that. It's such a great skill set mm -hmm. for anybody to be able to, de to deliver. You can use it in everyday life. Oh, absolutely. This is why I get to teach this all over the world. That This is consider the, the percentage of time each of us spends professionally or personally trying to influence or persuade or convince somebody of something and they don't see things the way we do. The, the truth of the matter is that's probably the biggest percentage of any day, whether it's professionally or personally. And, and these skill sets certainly will be adapted. And it's why you and I were exchanging emails. I want to make sure we adapt these skill sets to the people in the audience. But these skill sets are much bigger than that. This is for people and their spouses, people and their children, people and their and other people on their team. Each of us communicate in a different style and in a different fashion. The better you are at connecting with people, the, the more it will change your ability to influence others. Yeah. That's, that is so true. That's why we talk about that, the, that disc in our online training and just like you were talking about it I was thinking through those personalities you know how with one of them you get right to the bottom of lo bottom line with one of them you want to talk about their friends and their family and with another one you want to talk about uh, the, how secure and how safe this is the right thing this is the the safe thing for them to do with another one you want to talk about yeah I mean each personality like you said, you you hone in on what's important to them, what values, fears that they have, and really go, really address those, speak to where the, each person, each client is at. So that's really good information that you're giving. And I think one thing that's unique about the staging business, when we talk about our clients, is there are some times where you're asked to go talk to a client who is not receptive to staging. And does absolutely. not want to, mm -hmm. uh, like an occupied home, and they absolutely do not want to move something that needs to be moved. And as a stager, we also have to realize that we can't always convince people, and it's not only about communication style. We also have to know when to realize this is as far as this one's going to go. And, Pick your battles. <laughs> and at some point, you know, it's obviously the client's choice. You need to let them know that we're on their side and we're trying to help them sell their house for the most amount of money. But at some point, and sometimes it's very emotional because there's a divorce or there's other situations. And, you know, the stage sort of have to be psychologists too and just sort of understand not just how someone wants to be communicated with, but how far you can sort of push before you just need to, you know, accept where the client is going to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Try to get try to get them as close to what you need them to do as, as humanly possible. Yeah. Uh, I, I was, I'm an analogy girl. I love the analogies, but also bullet point kind of girl. It's like, so to communicate with me, I know I get a lot of people so many times sending us information where they want to do business with us. And it's like, I need to know what is your fee? And then they come back and they don't send the fee and they send everything else, but the fee. And I get it. They want me on the phone so they can do a good talk off and, I get all that, but it's like, dude, I'm seriously, I just want the fee. Just give me the fee. I get all that. <laughs> I need to get the information bullet pointed and I don't have so much time on my hands to do the, you know, the big deep dives and all the, all the other ancillary information. I don't need it. I just need the facts, the fee. Then I'll, then, then I ask, ask the questions and then I can get in with all that. Um, but yes, yeah, it's, it's interesting how, you know, differently everybody communicates. Yeah. But I think Ed is really right that there's such a big trust issue. Yeah. And as stagers, especially, I mean, we're going into people's, not just into their homes, but into the most personal and private, intimate spaces of their homes. And we're learning a lot, a lot of information that the public doesn't know, you know, how much their home is worth, uh, what their bathroom looks like, what personal reasons, you know, that they why they're moving or whatever. And we know a lot about what's going on in their family and stuff. And so there has to be that really strong trust bond there that we've got to build that, that um, you know, you can't just walk in. And like you said, just start spouting your knowledge. You have to build that, establish that relationship first. 
And there are ways to do that quickly. And the key to that is because attorneys in a courtroom um, who I teach, corporate management, who want their union employees to do stuff that they want them to do without threatening to fire them, because Mm -hmm. real estate agents who want to charge the kind of fee they want to charge, because stagers who want to walk into a house and say, you got to move all this stuff that you love out of it. So, so the room looks bigger. I mean, in each of those cases, um, if, if there's no level of trust there, th- then then it's they're going to resist all of that. Yeah. You mentioned something, Shell, a minute ago. It's amazing how people will call you in for your expertise, but then they'll resist that same expertise mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. the point where, I mean, w- without spending too much time on this, I started this a long, long time ago in the 70s. I taught drug education to teenagers. <laughs> in public schools. Uh, I didn't get into the negotiating, communicating, influencing, persuasion thing until 14-year-old kids started coming to me looking for help. Kids who were using drugs that if they continued to do so, might could could die from it. Well, I was taught to teach the topic. I wasn't taught to counsel or help those people. So, So I had to go back to school. And quite honestly, I had to learn how do I connect with a with a 14 year old girl who's shooting up every day. How do I do that? How do I do that sooner rather than later? Because if she came to me looking for help, I could certainly help her get better. The problem is she's shooting up every day. So, so two things. Number one, amazingly, they would come and say, "Mr. Hatch, I'm doing this. Can you help me?" And then as we went through the process of helping. They'd resist the very help they came looking for, uh, even to, even in that ex- extreme example. That p- that's just a predictable response. And for us, whether it's in that situation where it's a life and death situation, where I've got to get to that to, to the real problem as quickly as I possibly can, or if you're only allowed in a house one time, and in the first twenty minutes you've got people who clearly only want to know the fee you're going to charge. Or they only care about what color you're going to say they have to repaint the wall. You've only got 15 or 20 minutes to make the connection. And there are ways to do that. There are, there's research, there's science, and there's experience over the decades on how you meet somebody and in a very short period of time with hardly any conversation whatsoever, create the connection that allows for you to then share your expertise. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's great. Because we've got to be able to do that. We've be, got to be able to overcome their objections. And I think you've hit on a couple of those ways of, of building that trust and giving them the why behind what you're recommending. Not just saying, I think that needs to be painted this color or I think that needs to be moved here. But here's why. And that comes from expertise. That comes from training, from really having that that background, that foundation of of knowledge. And uh, so that's, that's through training and confidence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, everybody, we're coming to the end of our time. Any last minute uh, tidbits that anybody wants to pop in with? I'm just so excited about Risacon. I can't wait to see all of you guys there. It is a blast. We always come away with our mind just blown. And uh, in fact, Julie and I have learned to schedule an extra day after the conference just to debrief and and talk about the things that we've learned and how we're going to implement them. So, yeah, yeah. you're going to you're going to get a lot. So all these wonderful speakers, all three of you are going to be at RisaCon and RisaCon is this July. Uh, check us out, RisaConvention.com. If you are on the fence about coming to RisaCon, jump off that fence, take that yeah, risk. Yeah, you will yeah. not ever uh, regret going to a RisaCon. Yeah, all the feedback yeah. is absolutely stellar. We have amazing speakers, professionally paid speakers that are coming here to uh, talk about all kinds of great topics. And also the Home Staging Industry Awards Banquet is where we're going to honor the industry's uh, top influencers and also professional stager of the year as well as many other top 10 categories as well so if you're on that fence jump off check us out get there we still are in early bird pricing right now but tickets do sell out the hotel rooms sell out Mm -hmm. so make a decision sooner rather than later so we can include you in this um until then happy staging everybody thanks for joining see you in vegas thanks everybody